Welcome back, everybody. It's time to lock down some Pioneer Slivers. That's right. I finally committed to buying into more of the sliver genre. Uh, going into Pioneer, uh, I would eventually like to take it to Modern, but right now Slivers doesn't really have a place in Modern. Pioneer, on the other hand, maybe a little bit more so than Modern. Uh, should be a lot of fun to play, so we're going to go through the deck list and go over some of the stuff that we already know about. And then some of the new sliver additions, because there's lots of options out there. Uh, this is a five-color deck. It's going to be pretty insane. The mana base, we're going to work on. You know, this was, uh, this was more of an expensive uh, price point for me here. So there's a few lands that we'll go over that could be added into the deck that might make it a little bit better. Uh, but I, I tried to budget myself a little bit here. So first things first, we got our classic boys, Striking Sliver. One of in the main, one of in the sideboard. Some decks run two in the main. I need to make cuts to make other things work, so I just have a one of. One of Sentinel Sliver, creatures you control of Vigilance. And then we got our classic boy, the Predatory Sliver Lord. Uh, we got four of, of him, of course. This is the only one that's available as far as lords go for Pioneer, so of course we're going to run him. Uh, over to the new additions that we haven't seen yet. Mana Weft Sliver, that is our gem hide sliver. Same thing, same mana costs, same abilities. Add one mana of any color. Uh, sliver creatures we control have that. Um, so that'll be very effective for getting out some of the more insane cards like Sliver Hive Lord here. So we got a one of of him, uh, which is Slivers you control have indestructible. Why isn't my thing popping up? There we go. Slivers you control have indestructible. Cost one of each of the colors, 5-5. Five, five. Pretty, bomb, pretty good bomb card. I'm excited to land that at some point. Uh, Bone Slice Sliver, another bomb card, just a one of. Cost four mana. We give our creatures a double strike. Not bad. Early plays, and one of the some of the, the slivers that are going to be winning us games are Evasion Sliver, Gale Rider Sliver. All sliver creatures you control have flying for a one drop for blue. Good card, great card. Um... Let's see what else we got here. We got the Diffusion Sliver. This is our protection. Whenever a Sliver you, creature you control becomes a target of spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays to colorless mana. So, a good way to keep off uh, our opponents from killing our creatures easily. They will be able to, but it won't be as easy. Or we're tapping them out for the turn or something. Uh, one of the best bets for winning the game here is Leeching Sliver. Whenever a Sliver you control attacks... Defending player loses one life. You can really get on the grind and hit for a lot of damage with him. Uh, Siphon Sliver. Slivers you control have lifelink. Just some added value of lifelink to our slivers uh, for three. And it's a 2-2. Very nice. Uh, we went over Mana Swift. So, yeah, that's basically the creatures. Oh, we got one more down here. Metallic Mimic. This is our extra little buff boy over here so metallic Ment mimic enters the battlefield we choose a creature type we'll be choosing slivers and it is that chosen type in addition to its other types it's a shapeshifter and addition to that each creature each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield wish with an additional plus one plus one counter on it so very good card it can make all our boys way beefier which is nice um Let's go over some of the other plays that we have here in the deck while I put my phone away because people are blowing it up. Icon of Ancestry. I would like to maybe get a full play set of, in, of this in here. We've got one in the sideboard, three in the main. Uh, we choose a, a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Uh, so this is like an artifact lord type effect. And then we can pay three, tap this, look at the top three cards, and reveal a creature card of the chosen type from among them, put it into our hand, and then put the rest at the bottom of the library in a random order. So, cool card. Uh, I think it should suit us pretty well. And then we've got another good late-game bomb card, the Immortal Sun. Players can't activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Spells you cast cost one less to cast, and creatures you control get plus one plus one so excellent card to have uh hopefully we'll be able to throw it down here and there uh it is pretty expensive six mana but you know with mana weft we might be able to power it out um all right what else are we here oh collected company of course how could we forget the classic collected company 
four mana instant. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Great card used in a lot of different decks. Uh, this is how we're going to be powering out creatures at instant speed. Trap our uh, opponents in different ways. Uh, should be an excellent addition that all silver decks typically run. Uh, like in modern and things. So, mana base. Let's go over this this uh, interesting mana base. We'll see how it runs. I'm, I'm hoping it works out. We got one basic forest, one basic island, one basic plane. Three bleeding, plu bleeding pools. Breeding pools. One sacred foundry. Two overgrown tombs. Uh, we've got our unclaimed territories, which chooses a creature type, and then we can cast a creature spell of that type with any color. Um, and let's go into the more niche lands that we've got here. We've got the classic sliver hive. Add one mana of any color if it's spent to cast a sliver spell. And then we can late game start making 1 1 color sliver creatures, uh, which is pretty great. So, sliver hive automatically goes in every sliver deck, as it should. Um, Yorborg, Tomb of Yogmoth. This uh, allows, this legendary land allows each land is a swamp in addition to its other land. So this is just a little bit of some mana fixing to make sure we have our swamps and we can tap for what we need to tap for. Uh, just a one-of of that. And the other one, Mutavolt. Mutavolt. The classic Merfolk Mutavolt creature land card. Play with this all the time in my Merfolk deck. And because of its adaptability, it can go in other tribal decks. So most tribal decks would run this. Uh, so you can tap it for mana, or you can pay one. It becomes a 2-2 creature with all creature types until end of turn, and it's still a land. So if we bring this out and a predatory's out, it's going to get pumped. It's going to become a 3-3. Anything else that our slivers have, this thing will get. So we can attack with it. Uh, for running low on creatures on the board, we got these out. It, uh, it really helps our enable our board uh it plays around removal very well things like that if you have a clear board but you have a mutable out you can still attack into planeswalkers things like that or just grind out control players with mutavolts because it's harder for them to target and get off the field because it becomes a land at end of turn again so they can't target it unless it's a creature so that is our mana base we're gonna see how this goes i'm curious uh i have not played this deck oh yeah sideboard quickly sideboard siphon filter we got an extra one in the sideboard Striking uh, Sliver again, extra one on the sideboard, and then extra Icon of Ancestry. Um, the sideboard could need a little work, but there's some stuff that'll definitely stay in. Venom Sliver, uh, for maybe creature type uh, aggro matchups, all slivers you control have Death Touch. We can bring him in against those aggro type decks, maybe like the Mono Green Aggro, things like that. I haven't played Pioneer in a while, so I don't know what the current meta is right now. Uh, Pithing Needle, one mana. When it enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Activate abilities of sources with the chosen name. Can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So this is just a stop card. Uh, things like that. Planeswalkers, we can hit them and make sure they don't crank off with those. Grafted Cage, we need the Graveyard Hate. Creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. Uh, so this will shut down all our dredge and things like that. Uh, Warping Wall, this was in sideboards on other lists, so I threw it in. Exile target creature with power or toughness, one or less. Counter target sorcery spell, or create a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi creature token that has sacrifice it at a mana. Uh, don't know how effective this will actually be, uh, or what will sideboard in against this. Maybe for the counter target sorcery, maybe some control matchups, I don't know. Uh, but I think our stronger plays are going to be like Fatal Push, we got two of in here. And then Shaper Sanctuary for protection and refill on our creatures against control matchups or heavy removal matchups like Mono Black and stuff like that. Uh, this is an enchantment that comes down for one green. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of spell or ability opponent controls, you may draw a card. So if they try to kill a creature or do something to our creature, we're drawing cards. So we're going to make sure we replace things that they kill and things like that. So that's our sideboard. So we're going to go find ourselves a match here. See how it goes. Hopefully uh, you're excited. Leave a like if you are, and let's go find ourselves a match. All right, we found ourselves a match. So uh, yeah, bear with me, guys, as I learn this new deck. I haven't play tested it at all. This is my first time running it in. So um, let's take a look at our hand here. We lost a die roll, but we got a plains, an unclaimed territory. So we can go turn one, 
Gale Rider, turn to Mana Weft, and then start going into Siphon Filter or Icon of Ancestry. And we got a potential Sliver Hive Lord. So I think we'll keep this. We're going to be uh, <laughs> testing out the capabilities of our deck with these uh, these hands and stuff for a bit. Steam Vents. All right. Yeah, I, I don't even remember the meta. It's been so long since I played. Uh, let's see what our draw. Another Mana Weft. Okay. So we're going to do Sliver. Go ahead and drop this boy out. Yep. Oh, yep. There you go. Pay that. Yep, yep. And pass. Let's make that a little bit better. There we go. Well, this will be interesting. New cards. New fun. All right. Another Gale Rider. Interesting. Uh, I think we will still put out our Mana Weft. And could just get down another Gale Rider. All right. Uh, nope, we can't tap that yet. Okay. We're going to kill that. Uh, probably you should have swung in first, but they were going to shock it anyways, I think. So. All right. We will pass the turn. Unless they're going to kill this too. They are. All right. Shaper Sanctuary. It's coming in from the sideboard. So, is it... Uh, I wonder... Is Thing in the Ice still Thing in Pioneer? This could be the Thing in the Ice deck. It could be what we're up against. We shall see. They're taking their turn to find a third land, it looks like, so. A land here would be nice, though. There we go. Alright. Sliver. We will go here. And we will play out our other mana left. And pass again. Now we can go Icon. Since there's not a lot of pressure on our life total yet, I think we can wait on Siphon and just start getting in. Uh, we got Flying, so we can go past these guys, which is nice. So we'll drop our Icon. Depending on our draw here. Ooh, a Leeching is actually very good, though. Very, very, very good. Uh, I think we will put down the Leeching at this point. Yeah, let's... Let's go ahead and do that. They're tapped out. We could put down an icon as well. Just make these guys bigger while we can. Or we get down a siphon. Yeah, you know what? Let's just get down a siphon. We'll just set up our board really nicely. We'll drop icon and then we have... Or we just drop a silver hive lord. That might even be the better play here. Just drop Silver Hive Lord, start attacking in, in the air. Give them all indestructible. So, goblins? Is it goblins? That was weird. Okay. No attacks, which is fine. Ooh, that's nice, though. That's nice. I kind of just want to put down the Silver Hive Lord. I mean, can you blame me? Uh, yeah, let's, let's put down the Silver Hive Lord. Let's see, we got, we got planes covered. We need that, we need that, we need that, and we need, what are we missing? Red? Oh, uh, hold on, undo. What do we tap for here? We need... There we go. Sliver Hive Lord. Let's go. We cast him. Gotta love it. He might kill a creature here. Or counter? Don't counter. Oh, he's convoking? Ooh. Oh, no. Okay. Alright. So... Alright. Fair enough. Well, I think we can just attack in with Siphon here, or we hold back one turn. Mm -mm -mm. 
We'll set up for a collected company too. Yeah, we're just gonna pass for now. We'll just we'll just play patient, set up our board. Try to get down an icon next turn, or just set up for the uh, collected company, which might just be better anyways. Just guy ascendancy. Okay, creature come with plus one. All right, yep, that's a scary card. So this is the just guy ascendancy tokens. Who knows how they're going to combo off here. I got I to gotta get used to this meta. So, treasure coups. Okay. So, everybody gets a pump. They get to do some card drawing. See if they do anything else this turn. As long as this lifelinker's alive, uh, we're in decent shape, too. I mean, our life total is not going to get pressured right now. Passing. Just still on the turn, right? Alright, good. Sacred Foundry. Uh, I'm not going to pay any life. We're just going to get down Icon. I think it's the best bet right now. Sliver. We're not picking goblins. No thanks. And we can start going in here a little bit. Mm-mm-mm. How do we want to get in here? Or we or we wait one more turn and do a collected company <laughs> at instant speed. Oh, the choices. Do we ah uh, I really want to start getting in here. Um all right, we'll pass one more turn. We'll do a collected company at, at end of turn. I don't know what the best thing here is. Shock. To me? Alright, they're just going for my face. And we will go to sideboard. Okay, I kind of want to see what our collected company would have got us. A Sentinel, a Gale Rider, a Metallic. We probably would have just grabbed the Gale Rider and the Sentinel. Or Galrod Metallic. Um, hmm, what would I have chosen? I don't know. Cool, but we won the game without even having to attack in. <laughs> which, is, which is pretty funny. Alright, so Shaper Sanctuary is a good card for this matchup. Uh, what else would we like? I think Striking will be pretty good here. Fatal Push. They're just making a bunch of tokens, so... I don't know if we want Fatal Push on those. Um, Diffusion will be good. Maybe we take out a couple... Maybe we take out the Siphons. I don't think we're going to need Lifelink. Maybe we do, though. We'll take out a Bone Scythe. Mortal Sun. Do we want that? We could Pithing Needle their Jeskai Ascendancy. I'm down with that. Maybe take out an Icon. Metallic. 28 creatures. Um, let's try it. Let's try it. I don't know. Bear with me, guys. Like I said. We just won our first game. Without having to attack in. It's pretty great. Alright. So we got a Mutavolt. We got four lands. We have Striking, Leeching, Leeching, 
and a muta vault. Let's keep it. Our stuff might die pretty fast, but. All right, diffusion is good. Diffusion is really good. So let's go drop our one drop here. Hate that you have to click that. Pass. And we'll get down to diffusion right away. They may kill this off before it comes down, which would be smart. Once it gets down, it's going to make their day a, a little bit harder. And Pyromancer. All right. So they're going to get some elementals that we can attack into with the first strike. Another diffusion. Okay. Uh, I think I'll put down Mutavault here. And we'll go like this. Start getting in there. Cool, cool. So they can shock, but they have to tap out, basically. Shock will tap them completely out if they want to kill a diffusion. I'm gonna opt, make a creature, but we're gonna start dropping these leechings, and it's not gonna be pretty for them. We'll probably play breeding pool tapped, and then just put down a leeching. Unless we get like a, another decent one drop. Great two, okay. Creating some goblin tokens. Love to find a Gale Rider. Gale Rider and Leeching would be nice here. Another unclaimed. Yeah, let's just say no to that. I wonder, do these stack? All right, we'll put we'll put down leeching. We're just gonna set up. They can start double blocking and things, so I'm not gonna swing in quite yet. Not the best attacks. Really need to find our evasion. I think we'll really start going off with this. Uh, leeching, I believe, does stack. So if we put down two leeches, they'll lose two life for each creature we attack in with. Sahili. Okay. And start making Thopters, which sucks because even if we find Gale Rider, they'll have blockers in the air. All right, Pithing Needle. Hmm. Well, we could Pithing Needle. How do we want to run this? I think we will go here. Put down another leeching. Pithing needle Sahili. Sahili Sublime. We'll see how that works out for us. Uh, not going to attack in yet. Again, the double blocks are pretty crucial here. Because they will just double block our striking. Won't be too happy about that. Alright, they're getting some more tokens down. But we're stopping them in the air for now. Since we did the Pithing Needle on Sahili. Come on, Gale Rider. Alright, beautiful. Uh, Sliver? Now we can start going for it. We'll put down another one of these first. Then a Gale Rider. Now we can start going. Not going to attack Sahili since we got the Pithing Needle on it. But look at those stacks. Oh, the stacks. The stacks are great. And we win our first game. Very first game with Pioneer Slivers. Oh, man, they can't even handle it. We're hitting them for four in the air, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Yeah, 12. Putting them down. Oh, man. I love it.
I love slivers. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the deck list. What changes would you make? Uh, I know mana confluence is another mana fixing that we could do in the deck, uh, but it's expensive. But let me know what other changes you might make. Uh, help me out with the sideboard. What's the meta like in Pioneer? If you play Pioneer, let me know what the meta's like. What, sh what should I have in my sideboard right now? Uh, Pithy Needle did work. I think that really helped us there. And uh, yeah, subscribe. Stay tuned. I think we might double up with another episode this week of this since we're starting out and playing a little bit. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos that are coming out. So we'll see you guys in the next one.